All right, first steps in diagnosing air fuel management issues, fuel trim issues. Does the fuel trim variation, let's say it's a negative 30, does that happen only in one driving condition or across all ranges? That's very important to know. Example, you get a vacuum leak and it's a positive number associated, especially with a mass airflow car. It'll be more profoundly positive with mass airflows. So you see, let's say, positive 20%. We're adding fuel. But then you go above idle. You get into 1,500, 2,500 numbers. You need to run different ranges as you idle it in the shop, rev it up, and go on road tests and so forth. Watch the trim doing under different conditions. As you rev it up, and that trim goes from a, a positive uh, 15 or 20, adding fuel because maybe a vacuum leak, that number comes back down again because vacuum leaks don't have the profound effect on air fuel management when you get above idle because a little tiny hole in a gasket or a vacuum hose has fallen off, whatever, is a very small percentage of overall air usage when that throttle is open quite a ways and we're pulling a bunch more air in. Conversely, if you have fuel trim numbers that are normal at idle, but when you get on the road on a road test, they start falling apart and the numbers keep tracking up, tracking up, or adding fuel, it could be a fuel delivery issue. The fuel pump, it puts out good pressure at idle in the shop. You get out on the highway and the fuel pressure drops, but mainly the fuel volume drops. It can't put out the volume. Therefore, you know when you've got good trim numbers at idle, but positive numbers profoundly as you go up higher into engine load values while you're driving the vehicle, road testing, you probably got a fuel delivery issue. Now, is there a variation between banks? Left bank versus right bank? You got two O2 sensors, one for each bank, and I've got a really low number, negative trim on one side, maybe a drippy injector. I've got a high number on the other side, maybe I've got a vacuum leak on that, on a runner or a side of the intake, the plenum or whatever that's leaking. So look at the ratios, kind of compare it to what's going on with the vehicle. You can have a mass airflow sensor problem. By the way, it's a weird deal. And I really can't explain why, but you can have a mass airflow sensor with an issue and affect only one bank's fuel trim. Another thing you want to look at, Mr. Obvious stuff, is the vehicle in closed loop. Now, some vehicles will trim a little bit when you first turn the key on and start the engine. It's programmed into software. So you may see a positive 40% fuel trim. And when you start the engine, it says open loop. That may be normal for that vehicle. It's part of the calibration. Maybe even a long-term fuel trim positive addition will be stored into non-volatile RAM. It'll be actually calculated on the run by the vehicle. If it's a calibrated issue, then you also want to keep in mind on the subject of calibrations, if you replace parts on the vehicle, I got fuel pump was bad, not enough pressure, volume. I had a vacuum leak, I replaced a gasket. You do all those things and you still can't fix the fuel trim issue. Always, always, always check for TSBs, check for updates and other uh, sources of information to see if that manufacturer updated the software in the powertrain control or ECM, engine control module, because you will not replace parts when it's a software issue. So always look to see if there is a sign of an updated software to fix fuel trim problems because it's not just mechanical conditions, it can be software related.